I pledge, I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Good morning, everyone. First item on our agenda, we have the first reading of Ordinance 131, Helm Rezone, and Ordinance 132, Stover Rezone. If there's anybody here to speak on them, I will move them. So move. Second. We have a motion by Sutton, a second by Bikerd to authorize the first reading of Ordinance 131 and Ordinance 132. All in favor? Aye. Opposed? Motion carries. Okay. We have about three minutes now. Just okay. a couple things you want to go on before we get into the next item. Okay, the January 8th minute. Move. Second. Moved by Kipley, second by Sutton to approve the Jan January 8th general minutes. All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carries. Claim. Move. Second. Moved by Sutton, second by Weiss. To approve claims. All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carries. HR report. Move it. Second, Weiss. Moved by Kipley, second by Weiss. To approve the HR report. All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carries. <coughs> Quarterly interest report? Move. So, second. Moved by Sutton, second by Biker to approve the quarterly interest report. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Motion carries. We're making money now. Yeah. <laughs> More than we were. So moved. <coughs> second. There were a bunch of them. Come by Piker, second by Sutton, to approve the abatements, and they were all approved by the uh, equalization office. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Motion carries. Auditor's report is moved. Move. Second. Moved by Sutton, second by Kipley, to approve the auditor's report of account. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Motion carries. There is a fair contract for Dakota running irons for the 2018 fair. Last year's fair? How come, how come we're approving the contracts? I mean, didn't they used to do it? The fair board themselves used to approve these contracts? I mean, we got in a little trouble. They used to, and now they have to go through us. It goes, um, they get the original contract, and they make a recommendation, and then the um, state's attorney's office reads through the contract, and then it comes to us. Somebody wrote on here it was 2018. And I was thinking that's the contract for 19. Oh, it, it is for the 19th here. It was. Yeah, I don't think it's for last year. No. Going forward. No. Let me go ask why this was written. You want to have it? It did occur in 18, and they asked for payment, and they needed a contract before they could pay. So it is for 18. Yeah. Two hundred fifty dollars is that's what I'm looking at there. I, I don't know why the two hundred was crossed out. Yeah, I was going to say it was two hundred crossed out. Now it's two fifty. I guess I. Yeah. They did whatever it is they did without a contract. Now they need a contract to pay. Yeah. But why is the way I'm going to stand? 200 to 250. I don't know. <laughs> um, 
Yep, it's a big pull it and look yeah, into it and do it next week. <laughs> okay, so that one will be... I don't know, after six months, a week might kill them. <laughs> yeah. Okay, we'll go <laughs> on to the next Thank item. Uh, we have Ted Dickey, Northeast Council of Government, final quotes and documents for Safe Harbor Building. Good morning, Ted. Good morning. I have three copies of the closeout documents for the Safe Harbor Building. This turned out to be, I thought, a really, really good project. Uh, the county received 515000 to pass through onto Safe Harbor. Total project cost ended up just over $2 million for that building. I know Commissioner Weese, you were in there on the open house as I was just kind of going through the place. It's really, this is a nice building for them now. I encourage you all to go through there if you get a chance. So, uh, this morning, closeout documents, we need a motion authorizing the chair to sign. Officially close this grant out and move on to whatever next the county wants. I'll move it. Second, Weiss. Moved by Fiker, second by Weiss to authorize the chair to sign the closeout documents for the Safe Harbor Building. And there's a cover letter that moves with it also. Okay. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? <coughs> Motion carries. Thank you for shepherding that through. Thank uh, you, Ted. Let me know if you guys need anything. We'll do. We'll Thank you, yeah. number. Yep. Next, you want to go just uh, a couple lines after the hair okay. contract and skip uh, over. Sheriff uniform request for 19. Second. Moved by Kipley, second by Sutton to approve the sheriff uniform request for 2019. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Motion carries. Mm -hmm. Question. That, that, um, that's all in his budget, right? It's just a matter of... Correct. It's yeah. the policy manual they have to ask each year approval to spend the money, that money for those uniforms. Okay. Okay. Edmonds County Jail Agreement. Move. Second. Moved by Sutton, second by Fiker to approve the Edmonds County Jail Agreement. I believe it's $65 a day. Is that correct? Is everybody? Yep. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Motion carries. There's a maintenance agreement uh, for the generator at 2nd Street building and it's misleading because it's from Butler and they have the address of the highway shop on, but it is for the generator at the 2nd Street building. Move it. Second. Second. Moved by Kipley, second by Sutton to approve the maintenance agreement for the generator at the 2nd Street building. All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carries. A uh, natural gas contract for the courthouse here. Move. Second. Move by Sutton, second by Weeves to approve the natural gas contract for the courthouse. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Motion carries. Uh, an update on the tax deed sale held yesterday. Uh, the first parcel, there was no bid received. Uh, the last the second one was sold for the opening bid of 5000 and um, the last two parcels were pulled uh, because of unseen uh, circumstances, so they may go back on. Um, the second one, uh, there is a quick claim deed to the buyer in the packet. We need to authorize the chair to sign. Oh, please. Second. Moved by Weiss, second by Sutton, to authorize the chair to sign a quick clean deed to the property that was signed. Uh, what was the address on that? What? The address on that property that were... Uh, that was uh, 804 South 10th Street. At 804 South 10th Street. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Motion carries. <coughs> do we have to discuss any later or anything on what we're going to do with those two other properties? She was coming in, isn't she? On, she's on the agenda. Okay, well, that will be what she's going to be discussing. Yeah. Okay. 855, the next item on the agenda, Mark Millibrand Sheriff discussed court security. Morning. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning, Dave. Good morning, Mark. Good morning. We're going to have uh, Chief Deputy Lundin and Deputy Evans talk about court security. Show and tell. Good morning. Well, <laughs> 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 I had sent an email out to commissioners last night. Mark, you yep. otherwise yep. I have a copy of it here. Yep, we're running. Thank you. Yeah, we're just going to give you a quick update on uh, since the courtroom security has only been not even a year old. 
so you guys know what these guys are uh, up against. Uh, Terry will give you the, the lowdown of when they started confiscating stuff versus just to get things into order. And uh, we still have some other plans in order, minor things to changing. I imagine Judge Porcher will address some of those in a few minutes, but I'll let Terry give you the report. Uh, I just went to the courthouse security in November, November 2nd and November 15th. I said we should be keeping track of what's coming in and going out and whatnot. So we started just a daily log where we're keeping track of what we turn away at the door or items that we're confiscating, and that's all listed in what I gave you. But uh, it's amazing what comes in every day. We're turning around four or five knives a day that come in, either we're keeping or turning away. Uh, the pepper spray, we've had a couple guns come in. Um, People just, it's, it's your general, well, I've carried it in my pocket for the last 20 years, you know, I can bring it into the courthouse, not a big deal, and they, when you tell them they need to leave with it, most people are pretty good. They go and take it back to their vehicle, but some want to stand and argue, and uh, that's when we usually keep them and say, no, you don't get it back. You can't walk in here, it's a class one misdemeanor to do that, so. Uh, what amazes me is all these things that are coming in over there are coming into this side of the building, too, and you'll never see them. Most people don't, they're all concealed, so. But, uh, Have any of them been malicious? No. No, in fact, the guns that came in, the lady said, well, I just forgot I had it in my purse, and she took it out and set it on the counter. I said, I'll just leave it here and pick it up when I come back. <laughs> that kind of makes us nervous. But, uh, no, not malicious. I think most people just, I think we've had a couple that like to try push their luck a little bit, you know, see if they can get something through, or they, they realize that they've got it, before they get there and go, oh, I'm not going to say anything, hopefully they won't catch it. But we've had those, we've found them in people's pocket when they go through the metal detector, things like that. So, Showing some of this stuff. So, if we were to keep everything that we're taking away from people, I assume we would have about three of these boxes. But, uh, you know, you got box cutters and pepper spray. Uh, and a couple of my favorite knives that have come in. <laughs> out there, you know, big blades, um, switch blades that come in in purses, things like that, you know, just your typical pocket knives, things like that. A lot of pepper spray, we get a lot of pepper spray coming in, personal defense stuff, so uh, we turn that away at the door, we keep it, so players, people bring tools in all the time. Are players okay? What's the length? Anything over seven inches, we don't let them bring in because we consider it something they could use as a club or something like that, so. Generally, you know, if you come in with the big pliers, we just tell them to take it back to their vehicle. We just don't let them bring it in. And, and it used to be prior farmers. to November 15th, we would hold items for people. Yeah, yeah I was just gonna ask really? that. We, di we did, and, and I got over there and I didn't like that, because I don't like holding onto somebody's property. So if they come back and say, well, it wasn't broke when I left it here with you. You know, something along those lines. But I had a gentleman yesterday that I told him he had to take a knife back to his vehicle. He walked outside and threw it outside the front door and just let it lay on the front door. And I, I went outside and I took his knife and it was confiscated. And he came back and wanted to know where his knife was. I said, did you honestly think I was going to let you lay it down in front of the courthouse doors and let it lay there? That doesn't make any sense. So you get people that do some weird things. But. <laughs> Did you have something, Judge Porter? Uh, you know, I, I guess if you see me in the courthouse, you know, I'm not one to sit by, behind my computer the whole time. I'm up and down. I go down and visit with court services. I like a little face-to-face -face contact instead of being on the keyboard all the time. And, and uh, you know, so I'm up and down those stairs quite a bit, as security can attest to. So I, I, you know, have an opportunity to look at how things are going. And I've been extremely pleased. Um, the, the, we have the exact right people running it, uh, professional, efficient, friendly, you know, when, they, when they're meeting people, they're doing their job, but they're still greeting them and setting the right tone for when they come into the courthouse. Um, uh, one's a Packer fan, which I'm not thrilled with, but <laughs> I get along with them well enough anyway. <laughs> but no, it, it's, it, it really has, uh, it's just, it's just gone great. You know, the sheriff has, has got the right people staffing it, um, and, and so I, I just couldn't be more pleased with, with how it's going. Good. Just so you know, in the future, um, we, we've run into a little bit of trouble recently with hearing for them downstairs because down in the lower level, it's very well insulated. They can't hear what's happening on second and third floor. 
second who, and third who, floor can who can't hear these oh, guys are, the the security cannot hear up there so we're working with uh, Paul on some listening devices in the commons area so that if voices are raised these guys will know and be able to go up there quicker than having somebody yell down or call down that there's something going on just to increase the uh, the, the response times uh, because just two weeks ago they had a, a nasty divorce go through and and they were they were yelling and screaming and hollering upstairs but they couldn't hear it downstairs because of that insulation so we need to do something to bridge <coughs> that gap for the, the people that are uh, going through some of these things I've been in contact with Minneapolis County and talking to them about their court security down there where we have three courthouse or courtrooms here they have 16 down there and they have up on a monitor and we're talking about doing that for our stuff here getting a monitor so we can monitor uh, the courtrooms the floors the hallways you know things of that nature so we can see that right from the, the court security desk because um, right now we don't have that unless we bring it up on the computer but if we look at something else it's gone and we don't have it so for our standpoint if we need to run upstairs because something's happening and we are able to see it on the computer because we have a monitor out there it's going to make it much easier for us so that's one of the things we're looking at right now is getting a monitor put out there those things on there. how often terry is that big monitor used that has the court calendar on it do you see a lot of people using it the court calendar we use that all the time we have a monitor that has all the court dates on there and people coming into court all day long uh, we use that all day long because people come into the wrong building a lot of times um, because they think magistrate court is in the courthouse and it's actually across the street. Mm -hmm. So we're able to look at there and see their names on there and send them to the right place. A lot of people are coming in daily as well for, uh, they want to get their license plates for their vehicles and stuff like that. And they come in our door thinking that, you know, they can still get through or, yeah. or and then we have to send them around. But, so we're turning a lot of people away every day that are just in the wrong place too. So. Give them directions. <laughs> where they need to go. <laughs> we got a nice map out there and I go, you're at door number two, but you need to be at door number one. <laughs> We're also going to get schedules for court hearings when they have divorce cases or child custody and they'll monitor those as they do now. Every once in a while they'll go walk through the course of the courthouse. I'm sure a lot of people have seen them go through here, but they'll go through and around the court where they know our hearings are. Just look in and make sure it's okay. But it's a work in progress and we get better at it every day. Uh, I guess when I talked with the guy in Minneapolis County, he said some of the seminars he's been to, you know, the, the highest rate of violence when it comes to a courthouse is either a divorce hearing or a protection order hearing. So I think we're a great deterrent there for people coming in, you know, if they had any ulterior motives for being there, you know, they see us inside the door and maybe it takes care of a problem before it starts. So. As far as I was being confiscated, well, the people train themselves much like the federal building once you've been there once you know enough the second time will it probably get better as we go on and it has okay, um, that's it, it still amazes me though as we've had that sign up for two months and we still have people walking in every day and they'll look at the sign that says the item's going to be confiscated they'll stand there look at they'll walk in they'll still throw a knife in the thing in I don't know what they have in their mind of what items are going to be confiscated but you tell them they can't have a knife and they're just like dumbfounded so it has gotten better but we still got a lot of people that come in and pay fines and stuff that have never been here. A lot of people are still walking in going, I've never seen this before, when did this start? So yeah. it'll get better as time goes on, but for now it's working well. So on your um, overview, you had said there's approximately 160 to 170 people coming in daily, and then on heavy days it's about 200. Are you guys tracking that daily? Is what that we do is on our metal detector there, we can reset the counter on there every okay. day. And so, uh, each day we'll reset it and we'll just take a look at it. The highest I've seen in the two months I've been there is 270 people through in one day. Um, on Fridays we have DUI court and drug court to come in and that about doubles our numbers for the any time during the week. We have probation. Yesterday we didn't have any circuit court hearings in the courthouse at all. Yesterday we still had 165 people come through. And that's people going into probation to do uh, drug tests and check in with their probation officers, pay fines up at the clerk courts, things like that. So. It's pretty, pretty consistent at about 150 to 170. Is it down to a science or are people having to wait? Like a wait line? Is there a wait oh, line? Oh, you know, except for the school bus that came in and they with 50 kids. <laughs> it has a wait line for a while. But, uh, no, it, it's pretty good. I mean, as long as we don't, if we can run them through uh, and we don't have the metal detectors going off, I mean, it goes pretty quick if we've got the, a bunch of people that come in. Uh, 
when no. I've gone up and down, you know, like I said, I try to keep an eye on things, and and, and uh, I just don't see people, you know, backed up waiting. I, it, it really seems very efficient to me. I just I wasn't there when the, the the school bus came through, but you know, just normally people will come in in groups. You know, like a family might come in together because they're you know attending a hearing, whatever, and uh, they they get them through quick. Really, they, I, I'm very pleased with that. And remind me again, do we have two or three on duty? We have one that comes in at 7 and 15 in the morning. He opens up the courthouse, and then myself and the other uh, corrections officer come in at 9. So Craig's here till 7 or till 3.15, and then Mike and I are here till 5. Okay. The bulk of the day, 3. Yep, the bulk of the day we have 3, from and 9 until 3. 3 certified or 2 certified, 1 uncertified? 2 certified and 1 corrections officer. Gotcha. And during the morning before Mike gets here, we have a jailer come over or somebody else from our staff to help fill in. So there's two people at all, at least two people all the time. Yeah, for that first hour. We've always got two people sitting here. Right. A minimum of two. We just want to give you an update and let you know where things are going and, and where we're heading to. And if you had questions, we had everybody here for to answer mm -hmm. them. Sounds like it's working. Thank you very much. Appreciate Thank it. You. Thanks Appreciate for the update. Thank Thank you. Appreciate it. Have a great day. Thank you. Thank Appreciate you. Appreciate it. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Next time on the agenda, we have uh, Robert Swisher discuss ag land values. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Hi, Dwayne. How are you? Good. You? Good. 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 Morning. Good morning, Bob. Good morning, Bob. Yeah, I'm fine. I'm fine. You got more coming here? Good. Who's the other? Everybody can come on in if they rather than stand back there and Stand around the corners or wherever. That way, we don't have people standing out there and not being able to hear what's going on. Okay, great. 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 We're here to discuss some ag land values. Who wants to start this conversation? I'll, I'll, go, ahead, I'll go ahead and start. Um, Bob met with with, with you and a couple of Dwayne people. and Gene also. Yeah. And you know, we have the lawsuit pending right now. We're Chris has filed a motion for intermediate appeal with the Supreme Court. We don't, we don't know what's going to happen with that. Um, if it's denied, then we're, the plan is to move forward with discovery meetings, depositions, which would be Mr. Houck and Mary Worley and um, probably some of the county commissioners and various other people. Frankly, it's going to get expensive for us. It'll be expensive for you. Uh, we would like to get this thing resolved. Um, the discussion, I understand, I wasn't there, but the discussion was about for one year reducing the taxes from 15 townships in question by 10 percent. Um, uh, not the taxes, the assessment. I, I'm sorry, I apologize. <laughs> I, I get confused with all those terms. Yeah, I yeah, understand. The assessment. Um, uh, and, you know, if, if that was done, we'd be willing to dismiss the lawsuit and everybody can go on their way. Um, we would certainly like to get this resolved. I mean, Judge Myron in his decision said there are material issues of fact as to whether there was things that were hidden and, and whether it was illegal. We really don't want to go down that road, um, but if we have to, we will. So that's what we're here to do, is to make that proposal to try to get the lawsuit uh, resolved. And as I, when we had the meeting, I basically ran it by each commission, just talked, and to be honest with you, there was a lot of a lot of interest, and one of the reasons that came about, Gene had run some numbers, and you know, and I'm not speaking for the commission. I'm speaking as what I know about the situation. And in Gene's number, uh, when he ran that, it looks like about 96 million dollars would be forgiven on the assessment side of those 15 townships. The problem with that is your taxing factor is then going to go from 85.3 to 88.8. So we have to be careful because. 
now you're going to be paying 88.8% on the taxable value. And it's not just going to be your ag line. It's also going to be your Ben sites, your Quan sets. So I don't know. In theory, it looked good. But now that when you put it on paper, I don't know what to tell you. I, I mean, the last thing we want to do is do a settlement that's going to cost you more dollars. Because it, it's going to go from 85.3 to 88.8. .8, and it won't be just on the ag line. It'll also be your Ben sites and and I don't know those numbers because I didn't have Gene say, okay, if you had this much for ag land and you had this much for bend site and shop site, what is that going to change that? It, it's just not as easy as it sounds. You know, I, you know, I, if it would work, great. But the thing would be is if it would be nice and we'd be able to keep maintain the 85.3 taxing factor, that would be ideal. But according to Gene's numbers, he doesn't believe that the state will accept it because the state sends us revenue and they request this county to produce X amount of revenue. So if we lower the tax assessments and that doesn't generate the revenue, guess what happens? We got to increase the taxing factor. And that's where we're at now. So I, you know, it's it's like this. And I don't know where to go with it, to be quite honest with you. I, I would just soon see this thing go away and be done. But there's a lot of outside factors involved. I mean, is it? A, and the other side of that is, we still have to have the Department of Revenue okay that, which is not a given by any means. And all of that was explored early on before the commission even made the, the offer, um, I don't know, a year ago, whenever it was, far before the lawsuit. Um, and the Department of Revenue said, no, you can't do that because that would be neighborhood. That's what we told you you did wrong to start with. Um, the other problem with it, obviously, is everybody outside of the 15 townships, their taxes are going to go up again. Um, and the Department of Revenue told us we can't do that. So we explored all of that. Um, I was hoping we could get it done that way, but we apparently wouldn't sign up. And I guess it seems funny that they let it go on for eight years and didn't do anything. Uh, uh, you know, well, not only let it go on, they encouraged it at the beginning of the process. Allegedly, they didn't know about it. Right. But we, we, the county says they did. Yeah. So. Well, you know, I, we just would like to try to get this thing resolved. And, and if you guys have some proposals, we'd certainly listen to them. Um, but, you know, if not, we'll, we're prepared to move forward on this and do what we have to do. Anything you want to add, Bob? Just that it took eight years to get here. It took their <laughs> blessing. And 118% for eight years is quite a bit of money to come out of a farmer's bottom line. And that's what it comes down to, ladies and gentlemen, is bottom line for farmers. And it's not our farm. It's not the farms in the lawsuit. It's for all the farmers that are in the 15 townships that have been over-assessed and over-taxed for eight years. They're just asking to have an offer back for a one-year and that's it, one year. And if it's not 10%, come up with a percentage that would be acceptable to a, and we also have a new governor, and we also are probably going to have a whole new uh, government, so to speak, in here. I hope it is anyway, that would maybe be a little more, um, I guess, enlightened about this problem. I know we're doing everything on our end, so that's all I, I just like the people of Brown County to know we're we're not for more taxes anywhere. We're we're asking for one year's adjustment. Thank you, Mike. I appreciate your position and, and I share a lot of the frustration. I, I'm not trying to be argumentative. I take exception with the statement just straight up that you were over assessed and over taxed. There's a variety of different perspectives on this, and as I mentioned earlier. The Department of Revenue in their administrative rules actually encouraged this for the first several years of the implementation. And with the production ag being way below for a number of years stepping up, it's a very complicated situation uh, that we're talking about. So there's a variety of different perspectives on it. I think you guys have a valid point and trying to come up to some solution for this is not going to be easy. But just to be careful about the, the specific terms uh, of the conversation and so forth. Um, Dennis made the point in the uh, meeting that was held downstairs, which is one that's not taken 
uh, lightly is the fact that the state does have 66 neighborhoods. Uh, they're sanctioned in law. They're called counties. And there's huge differences uh, in very similar land across those uh, geopolitical boundaries. So there's a lot of inequities uh, in the system as a whole. Uh, and not to, to drive the conversation uh, you know, away from the subject at hand, uh, but there's a lot more work that's going on, and I appreciate you mentioning you know, that we have a new governor and, and some new administration, there's some new staff and so forth, and there's some pretty significant proposals about changing uh, the whole taxation process again. And I have some concerns about that. I actually sit on the Ag Valuation Task Force uh, that meets during the summer a couple, three times with the legislature and so forth. And one of my big concerns is wherever the legislature and, and the government, the state government determines to go with this uh, is consistent support on the, 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 on the part of Department of Revenue, which has not been there. I'm not super confident that it will be going forward either. So there's not an easy solution to this, but there's greater things going on in addition to this question. And to be fair to the, the new administration at the Department of Revenue, we haven't checked with them on this this proposal. It was the previous. Could, could you check with them to see what they would allow? You know, high you, side, low side, and could, everything? Could you do that? Yeah. I have a feeling it's going to be the same answer as we got previously, but I think it's a good idea to check. Yeah. Well, and if they say something, I mean, we're all ears. One of the things they did, Naturally, for the previous year, they lowered everybody to 87, all townships. And the state gave their blessing on a taxing factor that would have probably been somewhere in the neighborhood of 96, and they let us go down to 86 taxing factor. The only way I could see this ever working with a 10% assessment for your 15 townships, if the state would put their blessing on giving us an 85.6 taxing factor. That's the only way I see it working. Because if they would not allow that, we would have lawsuits coming from the other townships here because their taxes are going to go up 4% on their ag because of the tax in fact from 85.6 to 88.8. .8. So what's going to happen? We got one lawsuit here. Are we going to have 40 more over here? I mean, it's the only way it would be feasible if the Department of Revenue would say, okay, to make this thing go away, we understand you're in the dis difficult situation. We will cut you one more year slack of a 85.8 taxing factor would be the only way this is ever going to work. They just had a major, going? Yeah, they just had a major shift out in Department of Revenue or Department of yeah, Department of Revenue with their administration too. Just a whole, just in the last two weeks, they've had a major shift around out there. So who knows where that's all going to go? It's not the same people. Every it seems like every six months. There's, it's different people in the Department of Revenue. But as far as your question, I think that's absolutely something we'd be happy to check on because we don't want this going on any farther, yeah. you know, any longer than, than you do. So Gene, with Doug's idea with the taxing factor, would that stop the other townships from having their taxes go up if the Department of Revenue allowed us to go with that taxing factor? We still got that 85 uh, or 85.3 position factor that would that's where the change would be as far as that adjustment increasing the the north end from the other end. So yes, that would that would so allow me the fifth. eliminate that four percent. That would be the fifth thing the Department of Revenue would have to approve it. <laughs> they would have to give us an inquisition factor that that would I guess to their approval or make an exception for us again. But they're already going up it significantly, right? This would they're be the additional four. Due to uh, the assessments are going to go up pretty significantly. Mm -hmm. But this is the ad valorem factor and after so the this assessments would be are all the issue factor after the assessments go up. Basically to get to the supposed 85. Yeah. And honestly, I see that the only way it working. I don't see any other way out except the State Department of Revenue would have to grant that grace to have that same taxing factor. Because with that, we'd have a mess on our hands that wouldn't quit. <coughs> but in that same token, it would benefit you because you got to remember, you get a 10% uh, break on your assessment. 
but if I take your taxing factor and raise it 4% on the backside plus your buildings, what do you gain at 2%? That's why it all hinges at the Department of Revenue. I mean, it's just, there's so many numbers involved with this equation when you start slicing it. I, you know, I, you know, I suppose Gene could probably run some farm and say, okay, we lower you 10% on your assessment. Your taxing factor is going up 4%, plus now I got to throw your shop and your grain sites in. When you're all done, have you saved any money? That's the thing you got to be careful with. And if we could get the state to say, okay, we'll use that 85.5 factor, 80.5.3 factor, then it would make sense. Well, but we're willing to, to, I'm sorry, we're willing to have that conversation. I would appreciate it. Mike, I appreciate all, all you guys' time. Yeah. Taxes are a very complicated issue and everybody knows it and they throw overlapping school districts on here mm -hmm. and people, yep. people sending their kids about anywhere they want now. I mean, there's a whole lot of things that we don't know, but we appreciate your time and your diligence to do something about this. Yes, we want to get something done too. And Bob, you, uh, you brought up probably the number one issue in all of this and that's funding education. I just got my uh, tax notice, what I owe in McPherson County, and I figured it out, and 70 percent of the tax dollars are going to the Leola School District. And this whole entire equalization thing across the state of South Dakota in the 66 counties is all about funding for education. And the school boards, the school districts are not here. The county is responsible for all of it, the whole entire works, whether it's the commissioners or the assessor or whoever is responsible to come up with those uh, dollars, those assessments, <coughs> equalizing, and all of that so we can fund all of the school districts. If you can get the funding of schools off the general mill levy, because funding counties is not the issue. It's not the 22% of the, of the property taxes that you pay for the county, it's the school districts. Mm -hmm. And so, and I'd like to see a rally of people present that to the legislature and to the people in the Department of Revenue in Pierre, because that's the bottom line. It's funding education. So. Doug, could I just make one comment? Sure, go ahead. Devin said, I keep track of about three different parcels in, in Brown County that's in the Aberdeen School District and the Grove School District and probably Frederick. And in the Groton School District, and not, not in all cases, but I, the one I run is my nephew's, and in his taxes, 42% of his taxes go to the Groton School. So you people in the Southeast, not all of you have got your land in the Groton School District, but you got the lowest tax school burden of any in the, uh, school in the county. Just, just that's for your information. Dennis is at 70, and I think mine in Aberdeen is 58. You know, percent of my taxes go to the school district. So, yours is 42. And, it, and that's a blessing to you because Grove School District has got a lot of value, and it's been a good big school district, and, and of course you get less state aid because you've got that value. That, that, that's what Dennis was referring to in, in the issue. Well, not to drag this on and not to minimize the importance of this particular topic and, and coming to a resolution on this, the greater issue, uh, you know, especially with the legislature in session, is the fact that the, the productivity potential model, since it was instituted in, in 2010, uh, because of the fact with the eight-year Olympic average, which takes two years to get audited numbers into the equation, and then you take the high and the low out on an eight-year run, one year to the next, the values for taxation purposes for production ag land are artificially high because of the ramp up and the spike in commodity prices in 2011, still keeping those numbers very high. Well, commodity prices hopefully are about at the bottom for the time being. So you've got the top of the bell curve as far as the values are concerned because of that eight-year Olympic average program. And then you've got commodity prices down here which put everybody in production ag in a very bad situation. And so trying to work through some of those issues. Uh, we've offered a, a couple different possibilities to some of the legislators. 
um, whether they'll be entertained or not, but uh, we're very sensitive to that as well and, and don't think it's fair. The value of uh, production ag in Brown County the, right now, because of the way that system works, is triple what it was in 2010. Well, I agree with you, Mike. Yeah, I do. It's not fair. It, it isn't, and we would rather put our money in seed fertilizer and growing a crop than we would in my friend here's <laughs> check. You'll <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, uh, coffee without me. <laughs> it's all possible. You can buy your coffee. <laughs> but anyway, we well, do appreciate it. One of the things that came about is, regardless of how you slice it, if we're going to go by what the Department of Revenue ruled in January 2017, Everybody's going to be on one. The 87 percent, they're not happy. But hey, we can't control it. Department of Revenue says you're going to one. So you're going up 13 percent. You're going down 18 percent, but under what they rule, that's where it's supposed to be. Don't confuse that we're given a 10 percent assessment to do anything but try to set a, settle this debt. I mean, if the 87 percent are saying, why are you doing that? I want that 10. Well, in reality, the Department of Revenue has ruled that we overassessed you 18% for these years and we underassessed you 13. Where are we supposed to go as a commission? So our answer is we just want this to go away. That's why the 10% offer is being made. It's not to penalize anybody on the other end. We're in a mess and we're trying to get out of it. And the reality is they changed the rules on us. Right. And they didn't yeah. want to admit and it. And the fact of the matter is the tax dollars will be collected. It's just that it's going to shift it all over the place. Yep. Mm -hmm. yep. Exactly what's going to happen. So we will have that conversation and we'll be in touch. Okay. Thank, Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank, Thank you. Thank you, gentlemen. Thanks for your patience. I appreciate yeah. it. Thank you. We now have uh, Northeast Area Horse Racing Representatives. Yep, they're coming. Morning, Kent. Morning. You guys ready for us? We yeah, are ready. Right. Yeah, absolutely. Morning. How are you guys? Good. 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 Put them in the gate. Let's go. Yeah, there you go. <laughs> There's your race caller right here. Wow. We can do a whole race for you. <laughs> Well, good morning, everyone. My name's Kent Larson. I think I know all of you uh, here in the room. Bubby Hart. We're part of Northeast Area Horse Racing. I've been on the board coming up now on 20 years. And uh, we just kind of want to reconfirm that our commitment is to run in 2019. Uh, right now, there's funding. There's not enough funding that we've had in the past. We're working with the state legislators on a bill uh, that we hope will give us some emergency funding going forward. Uh, and if, if we get that outcome, we're asking for two to three years while sports betting works its way through the system on what's finally done with that. Uh, both Bubby and myself have worked with the local legislators from the Aberdeen area. They're, I, I can't speak for them, but uh, they're fully supporting us. Uh, they want to see the racing stay in the Aberdeen community because of the uh, impact it has economically and throughout the state. For It's more ag-related. So we just want you to know that uh, we intend to honor our, our uh, uh, lease in terms of payment due. We have the fundings to do that. Our hope is that we know conclusively uh, late in January what kind of bill we're going to have. We have sponsorship for the bill and I know some of you have been in here and know how that system works. We're a long way from having final and signed by the governor but I would say this, I can't speak for Bubby, but talking with our our partner Fort Pier that's actually now lobbying on behalf, uh, we're guardedly optimistic. So we just want you to know the message is we feel it's business as usual out there. Good. And if there's any changes, we'll be forthright and let you know. Regardless of what happens, and we don't even want to think about that, we intend to honor the lease agreement we've had year to year with Brown County. And what are your weekends again? We had dates approved for four days in May. 
uh, 18th and 19th, 25th and 26th of May. Okay. Any questions for us? So you Do have a bill, a specific bill, I'm sure. Well, we're going to get we're going to get a bill. We hope by the end of the week or early next week where we can give you a number and you can actually follow it. That's what I was going. Right. Okay. Uh, as of, I, I spoke with Shane yesterday, who's carrying this. Mm -hmm. We know we have support, uh, and what he told me is he's hoping to have a bill number either later this week or early next week that we can reference. Okay, that's what I was looking for. Right. Thank you. At this point, we've found no one in opposition of this, but we also realize when you're asking for funding, we're one of probably hundreds, if not thousands, mm -hmm. that's looking for funding. Um, so we're, I think we have a, a clear vision of, of what we need to do here. Uh, at this point, we've found no one in opposition of what we're trying to do in a short-term basis. We don't expect this to be long-term. Uh, we're hopeful that sports betting will participate with us. We're kind of getting that feeling. We're aware of Deadwoodsville, where they would like to contain that all within Deadwood, my understanding. And what we're hearing, and there again, rumor not fact, that there's not a lot of support for just a Deadwood only build it, a bill that they feel would be more effective or efficient in a statewide usage of some kind. Well, of course, racing has got a long history and heritage, and it would be sad to see that go away and having the opportunity to tell the story so people understand that there was funding in place and folks at the state chose to use that for other good purposes, but it's left the association in a bad situation right now, and it's something that deserves their consideration, so I appreciate what you guys are doing. Well, and Mike, I appreciate that. We've, we've elected as kind of representatives not to litigate the past. We can't, but, you know, at one for time... For informational purposes. Correct. It's, it's good there to was, know that. Exactly. There was millions of dollars there. Had that not been used for other purposes, uh, we wouldn't be here today. We would be in good shape. But we can't change that, and we're not saying that the organizations that received that funding weren't, uh, couldn't use the money or, or it wasn't a good cause. It was just the procedure to get that done. But it is good to know the history of, right. you know, where we've been just so we don't duplicate the same situations and put it bad. Now, is there a, is there a complication as far as uh, the car racing? Because I, somewhere, uh, it was, I don't know if it's on the uh, website there, or whatever, changed. that the uh, car races were scheduled for earlier in the month, too. I mean, how did yeah, that happen? They, or they changed that. They it was just a tentative schedule just in case horse racing did okay. not run. Got it. And now if you go to the website, they have their their uh, official schedule up that starts May 31st. Okay. It's too yeah. bad that that happened, I mean, ahead of the fact, because the, the uh, you know, the horse races uh, are important for the community, no question, and for agriculture and everything else. Yeah. Yeah, I did. Um, so we probably get a little bit of advantage um, with the camping. Probably some people camp on our facility the weeks of the horse races. But do you guys get any funding from the Aberdeen Promotional Fund with all the, you know, food and hotels and the great good that the, uh, the horse racing does did, in the city? We did from them, but we did from the, uh, the Aberdeen Hotel Alliance last year. Okay. They did make a donation and did help. And I can tell you, Rachel, in the past, we've had those conversations. I'm just not sure we've got any direct funding as a result of that. I appreciate you bringing it up. We're looking for any source of revenue and community support. Um, and there again, rest assured, there is funding there. It's just not at a level that really we're comfortable, you know, running a safe meet where you have people willing to come here and participate. Sure. Okay, so we're, we're looking basically for, uh, you know, some help at the state level over a short period of time. Now, if the, just a hypothetical sure. question, if the state doesn't come through with any funding or it doesn't change this gaming situation, sure. where does that put you this year? I mean, is it... The, we're unsure of that, uh, Doug, and great question, just because it may come down to one track.
back or another, whether that be Fort Pier or Aberdeen. And that will probably be left up to the horsemen's to make that determination. We certainly, and we might be biased, feel that Aberdeen offers a, a better venue in terms of track and participants. We get a lot of racers out of the north, from North mm -hmm. Dakota. Fort Pier is just too early for those folks. So we get a lot of mutual state um, uh, participation in other states or that Fort Pier wouldn't. Now obviously Fort Pier being in the Pier area, legislatively there might be a pull to think <laughs> that they don't want to lose it. They're supported by their chamber. Um, but we we certainly think and have for years we get better crowds, we get a better, better Pure Mutual. That goes back to the state in terms of revenue and we just feel like we have a better venue uh, but you have to understand we're representing Northeast area too. And I guess we, go ahead. I, I we don't really even want to talk about worst case, but if worst case that didn't happen, we would notify Kurt obviously right away. Don't set up stalls. Don't go to any extra. Uh, we would like to preserve those dates going in. Maybe the sports betting happens in 20. We're hoping we can get something done in 19 to stave that off. So we don't feel we're putting the county to, at any lost revenue or, you know, at this point. We just wanted to come in and we know there's a lot of rumors out there and preserve our dates, let you know what our activity is. We're, we're strongly advocating to continue this going forward. What, uh, what are they, what's the amount that you're asking for? 300000 okay. for both tracks. Okay. <coughs> and so, you know, there's like 30 new legislators out there, and I hope that the uh, lobbyists that, I mean, that, that and I would, both, I would think that that would have to go through appropriations also. And, uh, and I mean, that's a, that's a, a stretch, because right. I witnessed it for eight years. I know how tough it is to move stuff through right. terrific education process. Right. And, you know, I guess. But it's only 300000 It's a good cause. Yeah. You heard that before. Oh, yeah. 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 Well, we think the amount is reasonable, and we, we are pretty well schooled on how the system works and where those funds may come from. And uh, at this that point, down there. Yeah. And, and our young legislators are actually very aggressively on our side at this point. They haven't, no one's gotten to them to the point to think it's a bad idea. So we're, we're continuing to work that. And I, I want to say on the record that the Aberdeen representation has been nothing but helpful and, and absolutely <coughs> want this to continue, and they're doing all they can. Well, Christie's good at riding horse. I don't know about a racehorse, but I've drawn a lot of animals on a horse. So maybe you got that on your side. Right. Um, you never know. If, it, if it's considered gaming, that's always a lift. If it's considered ag-related, that's a different venue. Yeah. Well, it's been years ago, but I'm 2 and all just so. <laughs> <laughs> Back in the days when you used to have a chamber rate. Yeah. <laughs> so I guess the, the uh, thing would be is that you're going to keep Kurt informed. Whenever you hear something on our end, and I'm sure we'll be able to watch what's happening legislator as bills pass. Sure and kind of have a feel for what's going on there and I guess we just kind of let it set at this point in time and hopefully things work out for the horse racing and pier and things go the way you plan. I agree. We're optimistic. And we really need to know by April 1st okay. what's going to happen because we have to set, start setting stalls April yeah. 1st. It takes us a month to set stalls and set up rail and prepare for horse racing and they come in May 1st is when their contract starts. Workout areas and all of that. Yeah. So it, it does take us a month to prep before they get there. We'll, we'll have a decision long before that. We'll know what the state okay. is. Because if this bill, if the bill passes, I think, game on. If there's, if it doesn't, there's enough funding to support one track and that's where we'll have to make that determination. But that'll be done what would you guess, March at the latest? Yeah, because, I mean, Pierre even runs before Aberdeen, so they're going to need to know sooner. Yep. Good luck. 
Thank you. Yeah. We appreciate that. your support. Thanks. And Thanks uh, all of you. We'll continue in. going forward. And Anything else? No, just thanks for the update. So, you know, we have different facets of people want to know what, what sure. their program is going to sure. be for car racing and your your venue and stuff. And Kurt's venue out there, he has a lot of things he has to get ready. So it's just, I just appreciate the update so we've got to know what's going on in our sure. end. Yeah, yeah, we'll keep everybody in the loop. And in our, our, really, our mission is to work with car racing. We think we've got two really good venues out there from Brown County, and we want to continue to partner with them. This isn't us versus car racing or any of that. I understand that. Yeah. That's good. All right. Well, thank you for the time. Thank you. Thank you. Good morning. Good morning. Coming in. Next item on the agenda, we have Sheila Anderson, treasurer, with a contract. Well, she Morning, people wonder what she's up to. <laughs> <laughs> um, we had this discussion about you know, Thank you. just using some funds that were owed to the county for a person uh, owing back taxes. And we've been working with Chris, and, and uh, we have the recommendation that we keep the entire 14000 that was owed to the county. And then we have some money in trust, and then we go into a contract with him to pay $1,200 a month. So that way we get all the funds, and he would pay his own carpet layer. We get to, we get the entire amount. Um, give him a little bit more time to take care of, and, and still, thanks to Patty, she caught this in the first place. So the money that is owed to the county is it should be our money. So it worked out pretty well. They need a contract for uh, using those monies down and then paying 1200 a month starting by the end of February 2019. We need to try it. I'm going to be able to do that. <coughs> they seem to think so. Chris, <laughs> you think so? <laughs> we'll find out. Huh? If not, we'll be back here again. <laughs> I'll make a motion that we enter into a contract. I'll second. second. Good. Moved by Sutton, second by Fiker to enter the contract to settle some back taxes. Uh, my understanding is going to be the $14,276 down and $0.52, cents, $1,200 per month starting in February. Yes. And then they'll take care of paying their... Tax in April and October again when they come due. Okay. And they'll pay their carpet layer themselves. Okay. Yes. Yes. We have a motion by Sutton, second by Fiker. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Motion carried. <coughs> Do you have any questions for me on that stall by stall by property before? Uh, I do, and or I think. Or you're going to do that later. I I think Max is next week. Next week. Okay. Put it on the agenda. Oh, okay. Okay. I just didn't know. I gave you a statement so that you could see what what the question. And I I guess at that point in time, you can put your thoughts in on Sheila, what you think would be proper, and I guess everything's paid. So I guess you have really a lot to decide. It's a question that. of who you're going to reconvey it to, and. Then yeah, if you're going to reconvey it, and then we're going to reconvey it too. So, I, but I had asked Max to put it on the agenda for next week. Hopefully, Sheila can be here. Hopefully, um, all of the interested parties in that property will be here as well. Okay. Yeah, so we'll discuss that right. next week. Right. Thank you, ladies. Thank, Thank you. you. And I don't know, Gary. If maybe you could reach out to the interested parties on that property and make sure they see it on the agenda. Sure, for sure. Thank you. And also, uh, regarding the property in Hecla, uh, we're going to do some research on that also and put that on the agenda for... I have. I mean, I know what, I know what the legal options are, but I can decide to do that in the executive session. Okay. Matt, do you have anything else? No. Gary. I just need an exec for personnel. I would move exec for personnel and legal. Second. Moved by Kipley, second by Sutton, to go in exec for personnel and legal. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? We are in exec. We're out of exec. an hour. No action as a result. Uh, Gary had a couple things regarding uh, open session. Uh, one of them was re as far as who is going to view the video after each meeting. Uh, I don't know if we got to have some kind of rotation. I did two before. Gary did last week's. Do we... What, what are we doing it for? Just to make well, sure that the... 
was off the, during the lights off during the exactly. They worked, everything's legal, everything executive and on it, those kind of things. So how long does it take? Well, the two weeks ago going quite a long way, <laughs> I will tell you. And I don't think you have to truly watch the whole thing, right? You just have to forward oh, to where the exec is. No, I pretty much usually you watch the whole sure thing because you never know. In the past, we've had some glitches where, yeah, something didn't work or run or something. I, in fact, one meeting that I was, we went into uh, a short break. Somebody had to have a restaurant break. I can see myself reach down and hit the button. And it stayed on the whole while, and I can come back in. I reached down, hit the button up, and it didn't cut off. Huh. And I can clearly see myself reaching down and doing the button, and it didn't shut off. So those are the things that, and there was nothing that happened at that meeting. It's just that we had a, a bathroom break, and everybody was kind of munching on chocolate and everything. Well, I don't know that the public's got to see that, but it, that's the way it was. So the light went off, but yes. the recording was on. That's correct. <laughs> and I can clearly see myself, and I can Gary probably... That's no, that's good too. So anyway, that's why you need to be mm. That's why you review it. So I don't know if you want to do month by month or is Gary doing them or uh, I don't mind doing my get rid of the videotape. <laughs> <laughs> so that's that's the question to differ. I, I don't mind doing it once in a while, but I'm not gonna do I'll it after every meeting. I'll look at this week. <laughs> just just Paul just need to know to send it to me. Yeah. Yeah. I'll take I'll take it for the next month. I'll do any of those meetings that are 10, 15 minutes long. <laughs> <laughs> I only want the ones over an hour. <laughs> so, that okay. okay. To send it, send it okay. to me for a while. I'll, I'll take that. it ongoing. Okay. Yeah. Like Next uh, item uh, Gary probably had was uh, we have quarterly department head meetings. The question is... No, we have annual reviews. Annual reviews, but we're talking about the quarterly department head. No, the annual no, reviews. Annual, annual, annual reviews. <coughs> you know, I've... I've when I ask for volunteers, I'm, I haven't been getting a whole lot of response of who wants to do them, so I didn't know if you wanted to still continue doing them or not, or, or if you want to move them to every other year, or how you want to do it. Is there a process by which we keep doing it, but yet if there's no issues, there's no questions, and it's kind of the same standard stuff that you forego it, or can you not do it that way? Does it have to be all or none? Yeah. In order to be consistent, if you're going to do it, you yeah. should do it the same for everybody. Exactly. Because you can't give them the option that they want to come in and visit us, or if we have issues, that we make them come in. Because I think it's got to be the same policy for everybody. And again, I, I feel there's value in getting together with some of those department heads at least once a year to just touch base with them. But others are here every week too so we know what's going on so it is yeah. it isn't one size fits all but I think for the department head the annual reviews need to be handled either we have them or we don't <coughs> if everybody's okay with doing away with them I'm okay with that I just think they still have some value I do well, I guess I was on a different base I thought we were talking the quarterly department heads we have downstairs <laughs> which seem to be kind of not going anywhere as where I was at I think the annual reviews are probably important that you're at least letting your employee that you're reviewing shows your concern. I mean, if you just do away with them, then everybody's thinking, well, mm -hmm. I, I think they're important to have the other reviews. The one I'm concerned about is the quarterlies we have down in the basement that don't seem to really go anywhere. You know, every quarter we have a department head meeting, and sometimes it turns into be a gripe session. Sometimes good things come out of it, but I don't know, it doesn't have to be done every quarter. That's kind of the one I was looking at. <coughs> Think semi-annuals enough? You could do it as topics come up or something like that too. Randomly? Yeah. Because we're kind of random already on those. Yeah, well, they're, yeah, of course. Some months we have them every week <laughs> <laughs> if we base it on topics. <laughs> <laughs> that was just some that I was thinking is the, the quarterlies don't seem to be yeah, very like beneficial. Like for next month, February, we really don't have anything that... It's different if you get, you know, something that everybody needs to know about right. policy changes or procedural changes or something like that. But sure. It's business as usual. If you make them random, will we ever do them? <laughs> oh, yeah. But but now it's semi-annual. It's one the, the first half of the year, one the second half of the year, kind of let things let things build where we have enough issues to discuss and 
maybe have it for March, March and May. October. I'll second that motion. Okay. So go semi-annual instead of quarter. I, I think I, I, would, I would agree with that for sure. Okay. We have a motion by Sutton, a second by Kipley to do our department head quarterly is to semi-annual. All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carries. And we will continue with the annual reviews for department heads as always. Yep. Okay. And, and I you do a nice job of putting two or three the same morning. That helps. Yeah. 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 Well, they don't take long. It doesn't matter. Trying to do that. So if somebody's available next week, that'd be great. I will be. After the meeting. And I can make myself a good Okay. So we'll do it. It's just nice to have kind of a rotation of commissioners yeah. too instead of the always the same one. So Shannon, good. you have something on your mind? Uh, the zoning board. Where are things at with that? We met this morning. We have an informal kind of working group going. We're still kind of reviewing what our um, ordinance say. We think it's more important to move forward because there's some disagreements between the city and the county as to where we are as far as we'll re they believe we relinquished our jurisdiction in the three miles. Mm -hmm. We do not believe that we did. There's no, um, and Chris could probably attest to this, he speaks a little more fluently about it, but there's there's never been a resolution where the county relinquished their jurisdiction in the three mile. In mm -hmm. fact, in 1975, there was a resolution proposed to do so and it failed. So we don't want to argue with the city about it, but we are looking forward because they've asked us to, to give them some proposals on how we would fix it. Mm -hmm. Whether that be, you know, a couple of the different options we've talked about is just taking the three mile and having a joint jurisdictional board where city and county both sit on it. Another option was the city takes the one mile, the county takes the two and three mile. Um, so there's some options out there. We're just kind of comparing and having Cliff with our welfare department is doing a lot of research for us on it and helping us out. So we're going to meet again next Tuesday informally and as soon as we get something concrete, we'll bring it to the commission and share it with uh, the city and see what their thoughts are. So as far as you guys are concerned, it's going forward to planning and figuring something out. Yeah, absolutely. Okay. Anything else to come before the commission this morning? Move to adjourn. Second. Moved by Sutton, second by Piker to adjourn. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? We are adjourned. Have a donut.